Lizzie was four minutes and half a drink away from giving up on dating. Or hooking up, or whatever the hell phrase best described her desperate need for an emotionless, physical connection to a willing body. Hooking up would probably suffice. But she was being stood up. Nate, five foot ten, brown hair, ironic mustache, who liked hiking, barf, and dogs, aw, was standing her up. Lizzie finished off the last of her drink and gnawed on the ice cubes, knee bouncing and eyes fixed on the door. Being stood up wasn't something she was used to, but it was happening with greater frequency, which was simultaneously disruptive to her regularly scheduled sex life and a kick to the tit confidence-wise. She checked her phone for the 73rd time, then tossed it back in her purse, resigning herself to the fact that he was ghosting her. Whatever, she'd have one more drink, head home, and find comfort in her vibrator. It wouldn't exactly calm the dead sprint of her thoughts, the way the press of another body did. But an orgasm was an orgasm. The bartender darted up and down the length of the bar, pouring shots and sliding beers across the glossy wood. She watched him work, quick and efficient, focused. If she were working behind the bar on a busy Friday night like this, she'd be forgetting drinks and neglecting patrons. Her sticky brain would latch onto a pretty face or the beat of a song, never following through the way the current bartender's quick hands reached and grabbed, seeming to do 100 things at once in a fluid sink. He walked past her, and she tried to catch his eye, but he was looking ahead. She'd get him on the next pass. The place was packed. Center City's young professionals grasping at all the joys, discounts, happy hour offered. A warm body pressed a bit into her side to get closer to the bar, and the crisp brush of a cotton shirt against her bare arm made her want to purr at the contact. Lizzie needed touch like plants needed sun. It was fundamental. The bartender rounded back, and Lizzie leaned forward to get his attention. But before she could get any words out, the body next to her spoke. Oi, mate, can I get another? The body spoke in an accent, an Australian accent. Her brain pirouetted to attention. This was not a drill. There were few things Lizzie loved more than a man with an accent. Please, merciful Lord, let that beautiful voice belong to an equally beautiful face, so I may have sex with a hot Australian. Amen. She turned and was confronted by a man who looked like the sun shone through him. He was tall and broad, his wide shoulders decorated with the slopes and valleys of lean muscles, obvious beneath the clean lines of his button down. His sleeves were rolled to the elbows and a loosened tie hung from his neck, practically begging Lizzie to stroke the shiny silk. Her eyes scoured over him, the pleasure centers in her brain going off like winning Vegas slot machines with each new discovery, sharp jawline, tempting textures of stubble, firm slant of his mouth, dusting of hair on his forearms, peak of an Adam's apple. He was sensory overload. He must have sensed Lizzie's ogling, because his eyes flicked to her, then back to the bartender, before doing a double take. He blinked at her with something close to surprise. Her brain hyper-focused on his eyes, a fascinating blue-green that reminded her of when she would hold pieces of sea glass up to the sun as a child. Lizzie smiled, and his eyes flashed to her lips before his own mouth ticked up at the sides. As she continued to study him with an almost anthropological type of fascination, his smile grew, wide but bashful, the tiniest hint of pink kissing his cheeks. See something you like, buddy? The words were gravelly and deep, purring across her skin and tickling down her spine. God, yes, she said and laughed. He laughed back.
a quiet shaking of his shoulders that contrasted sharply to the sonic boom of her own. He crossed his arms over his chest, leaning lazily against the bar, settling in. This was going to be fun. Thank you for listening to this clip provided to you by Macmillan Audio. To hear more, look for this title wherever audiobooks are sold.